It's been a little over five years since I was introduced to Danganronpa by the PlayStation Store and then me playing it. Originally on PSP, the PS4 released a duology bundle of the first two games. I checked it out on a whim, played the first hour of the first game, Trigger Happy Havoc, got my heart broken and my soul ripped straight from my chest, and I knew I was hooked. That was also my first experience with visual novels as a genre. I'm pretty sure Danganronpa was my first one, and what a damn doozy of an intro. This episode will probably contain general broad spoilers, but I'll avoid specific ones, so if you watch this and get the urge to try this franchise out for the first time, I won't hamper your innocence. Also, this is really just about the games. I tried watching the first anime and I hated it. They just sped through everything and some characters' voices were different and notably worse. The games take their time and really let you get to know what's happening and build tension. It's definitely how this series should be experienced. The entire Danganronpa trilogy is absolutely fantastic in my opinion. 1, 2, and V3. All of them gave me the same sense of anxiety and despair as my favorite characters one by one either got murdered or murdered and got executed, trying to escape the deadly prison of Hope's Peak Academy taken over by a maniacal robo-baron orchestrated by an ultimate mastermind who slipped themselves into the group unnoticed. The intrigue is off the charts. I have never played or seen a mystery more enthralling and devastating, and when my favorite characters got axed one way or another, let's just say I've known people IRL whose death left less of an impact. But that's part of the experience, I'd even say most of it. I know some players whose response to that idea was just to harden their hearts and expect the worst and not attach themselves to anyone so they didn't care if they died, but that sucks ass. You have to let yourself be hurt or there's no stakes. You have to invest emotional time and energy into hangout events and defending your waifu or husbando's innocence in one trial just to have them get a knife in the back 30 minutes later. That's how it works. It's like people who play scary games but completely disengage so they don't feel fear. Well, and what's the damn point? Do you watch comedy shows to not laugh? Don't be a weirdo. People will debate the quality from game to game, but I really did enjoy each of them equally for different reasons that balanced each other out. For example, I think the first game has the best overall story, the second has the best character, and as far as I can remember, the third has the best murders and trials, though twos were also really good. Nagito really carries the second game on his back for most of it, but every Danganronpa game is super worth playing. There's also Ultra Despair Girls, which is a spin-off half-sequel to the first game that plays really differently, and I did it for like two hours, but I had horrific allergies the whole time and I couldn't really get into it. There has not been a real Danganronpa game since V3 came out in 2017, and before you say Danganronpa S, please consider removing your tongue from your mouth and flushing it down the toilet where that game belongs. Danganronpa S Ultimate Summer Camp is a garbage gotcha game that only exists as a vehicle for swimsuit fan art. Literally, that's why they made it, was so people would spend like $50 trying to see what Kyoko looks like in a swimsuit. And the answer, by the way, is gorgeous. Though I promise I spent no money on this outside of the launch price of $60, which holy shit, you're joking. I bought the game hoping it would be fun or interesting outside of just oogling at top boob, but nope, you've got every Danganronpa character from Trigger Happy Havoc, Goodbye Despair, V3, even Ultra Despair Girls, and they don't do jack. I didn't expect a full cast murder game or anything, although that would have exploded my brain, but Danganronpa S is a net negative experience for the franchise and utterly pointless. The creator of Danganronpa supposedly left the series after V3 was released, and his latest co-project released not so long ago with World's End. Club, a game I put in my 2021's top 5 worst games of the year because it felt like a massive middle finger to Danganronpa fans. Instead of making a new Danganronpa, he co-made a game that is pretty much anti-Danganronpa. A killing game that gets cancelled after like half an hour and then turns into some bullshit. That's basically what it is. He was like, oh you wanted a new murder game? How about I murder your expectations instead? I'm not saying the guy has to make a new Danganronpa, but his next project didn't have to be so aggressively the opposite opposite of Danganronpa to the point where it almost feels like a statement, you know? But when it comes to a new possible entry, people have questions like, will it grow stale? Or how can they continue a story that was so definitively ended in V3? And the answer to the first question is, no, I live for this, make 10 more games, I'll play them all. While the answer to the second question is, by either rebooting the franchise entirely, aka same rules, different circumstances, or by letting us play through some of the other storylines alluded to in V3. Without spoiling anything too major, I would absolutely love to play as a certain character in the killing game they were in previously, and see that thing all the way to its conclusion. It doesn't matter that we know they win it, hence why they're still alive, because they'd be the protagonist and nobody expects the protagonist to die anyway. 
So there's an entire story right there begging to be fully realized, even if it wouldn't contribute too much to the grand series-wide narrative. I just miss Danganronpa. Whenever someone on Twitter asks which game you wish you could re-experience for the first time, this series is at the top of my list. It's really one of a kind. Other investigative visual novels like Ace Attorney are also amazing, but they evoke different feelings. Ace Attorney is pretty lighthearted most of the time, but Danganronpa is dark, desolate despair. And I need more of that in my life. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Watch my entire Danganronpa series and pretend my voice didn't change, and I'll see you guys next time.